हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अर्पिता करवा डॉट कॉम इंडियाज फाइनेस्ट ऑनलाइन कोचिंग फॉर इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड टुडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग अ वेरी फेमस नॉवल बाय जेन ऑस्टन कॉल्ड प्राइड एंड प्रेजुडिस इन द लिटरेचर वर्ल्ड दिस इज़ वन ऑफ द फाइनेस्ट रिटन बुक्स एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई हैव मेड इट सुपर इजी फॉर यू ऑल टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड ग्रास्प द कॉन्टेंट्स ऑफ द बुक सो विदाउट मच अडो लेट्स बिगिन नाउ फ्रेंड्स बिफोर वी टॉक अबाउट द प्लॉट ऑफ द नॉवल लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस द नॉवल टू यू The story is set in the fictional villages of Longburn, Netherfield and Pemberley in 19th century England. And friends the novel is narrated from a third person perspective and this novel most clearly shows the influence of Samuel Richardson. Now friends moving on to the main characters of the novel. Uh let's see the Bennet family first. The Bennets they live in a village called Longburn. The head of the family is Mr Bennet, a well educated practical man. and his wife mrs bennet is a noisy and nervous woman and the couple has five daughters who are they jane the first one the most beautiful of their daughters elizabeth or lizzy the smart attractive protagonist of the novel and then we have mary catherine or kitty and last is lydia she is the youngest one now lydia is the most loved and spoiled by her mother the only thing mrs bennet dreams of marrying all her daughters to wealthy men In fact one of the very famous quotes and the opening line of the novel is it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife so in fact uh, mrs bennet proudly announces that the family can afford a servant and her daughters have nothing to do with the kitchen now then comes the bingley family who have just come from london to live in the neighboring village of netherfield now charles bingley is a smart wealthy and friendly young man and mrs bennet wants mr bingley to marry one of her daughters now mr bingley has two sisters caroline bingley and louisa hurst or mrs hurst and she is married to mr hurst now friends let us meet the hero of the novel mr fitzwilliam darcy he is the best friend of charles bingley and is very wealthy unfriendly aloof and arrogant he has a younger sister georgiana and darcy is the master of a very huge estate in pemberley he has come to stay with mr bingley in netherfield Now other characters in the novel include Charlotte Lucas, Elizabeth's best friend who is a spinster, Mr Collins the clergyman and a prospective legal heir of Bennet family, George Wickham a militia officer and godson of late Mr Darcy that is Darcy's father. We also meet Lady Catherine de Barrow an overbearing and domineering woman and ultimately Mr and Mrs Gardiner uncle and aunt to the Bennet sisters. Now friends the novel begins in the village where Mr and Mrs Bennets live they come to know that Mr Bennet has organized a party and Mrs Bennet is very keen on attending the party finally and it is in this party where the Bennets and the Bingleys meet Charles Bingley and Jane are immediately attracted to each other and dance together Charles pokes Mr Darcy to dance with Elizabeth not to this Mr Darcy replies that she isn't very pretty to look at and he is not interested in her at all Meanwhile, Elizabeth overhears this conversation and dislikes Mr Darcy for this rude behavior. Now, Charles Bingley's sisters are in awe of Jane. So after the party, they invite her to dinner at their home the next day. Now, Elizabeth she accompanies Jane to Bingley's house in Netherfield Park. However, Jane falls sick because of being out in heavy rainfall. As a result, both the sisters have to spend a week in Netherfield Park. Now during this one week Jane and Charles come close to each other. Contrary to this, initially Mr Darcy and Elizabeth refused to even see each other eye to eye. However, after some time when Mr Darcy observes how smart and witty Elizabeth is, he starts getting attracted to her. At this point we come across a twist in the story. Now Charles' unmarried sister Caroline is envious of Elizabeth because she too likes Darcy. Now every time Darcy talks to Elizabeth he is unable to swallow his pride his pride and arrogance about his high social status is basically stronger than his attraction towards elizabeth the weekends and the two sisters return to longburn now friends at this point another character enters the story that is mr collins and he is the prospective legal heir of the bennet family and has come to their estate to get married to one of the bennet daughters 
He proposes to Elizabeth, but she refuses to get married to him. He tries to convince her by telling her that her patron, Lady Catherine de Barrow, has made him the dean and he earns good money. Elizabeth is stubborn and rejects Mr. Collins' proposal. Mr. Collins is very disheartened. However, soon Elizabeth gets to know that he has proposed to her best friend, Charlotte Lucas, and she has accepted his proposal. Now, then we also meet another character, George Wickham. He is a militia officer and the godson of Darcy's late father. He provokes Elizabeth against Mr. Darcy and tells her that he lost his job because of him. Now Elizabeth develops feelings for Wickham. Now a few days pass and a ball is hosted by Bingley in Netherfield. Everyone has a good time and it is expected that Jane might soon be engaged to Mr. Bingley. However, the next morning Jane receives a letter from Bingley's younger sister Caroline. In the letter, she has specified that they are moving back to London forever. And the letter further states that Charles will get married to Mr. Darcy's younger sister, Georgiana. Now, Elizabeth assumes that Mr. Darcy must have provoked the Bingley family to take such a steps. She starts hating him even more. Now, as the story progresses, Elizabeth visits her friend Charlotte in Rosings, Kent. She's now married to Mr. Collins. There, Elizabeth gets to know that Lady Catherine is actually Mr. Darcy's aunt. Lady Catherine organizes a party where Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy meet again. A few days pass and Mr. Darcy confesses his love for Elizabeth by proposing to her. However, she rejects his proposal and not only Darcy proposes in a way that makes it seem like he's doing a favour by marrying her, but she also blames him for Jane and Bingley's breakup and for making George Wickham lose his job. Hearing all such allegations, Mr. Darcy feels sad and he leaves. However, he hands a letter to Elizabeth the next morning before leaving the place. The letter states that he did not cause the breakup of Jane and Charles Bingley and further he took away George Wickham's job because he ran away with Mr. Darcy's 15-year-old sister and was going to manipulate her into marrying him for a big dowry. So reading Mr. Darcy's letter, Elizabeth realises her mistake of falsely judging Mr. Darcy's character and being prejudiced towards him. She goes back to home and Mr. Darcy returns to London. Upon returning home, she tells Jane how George Wickham has been fooling everyone. She also learns that Wickham has disappeared, leaving behind heavy debts and lies that he has told everyone. Now, some days pass. Elizabeth's uncle and aunt, Mr. and Mrs. Gardiner, visit Longburn. The couple decides to take Elizabeth with them for a trip to Pemberley. Thinking that Darcy must be in London, Elizabeth agrees to visit the estate. However, it turns out that Darcy is there as well. Elizabeth, Darcy and Mr. and Mrs. Gardiner spend a very good time together. The respect with which Darcy treats Elizabeth and her relatives make Elizabeth see him in a new light. Now, her feelings for him are completely transformed. She has fallen in love with him. However, the good time in peace is ruined when a shocking piece of news comes in. Lydia, the youngest sister, she has run away with George Wickham. Now, friends, please remember that both of them eloped to Gretna Green. You have to remember the place. Elizabeth goes back to her home to comfort her parents while everyone is trying to find Lydia. A couple of days pass by but Lydia has still not been found and then comes a letter from Mr. and Mrs. Gardiner informing the Bennett family that they have found Lydia. However, Wickham has refused to marry her and this worries everyone as the reputation of Lydia and the whole family is in danger. Wickham demands money from the family to marry Lydia. He gets his desired amount of money, making everyone think that it must have been the gardeners who paid him. However, in reality, the money has been paid by none other than Mr. Darcy. He secretly finds them and gets them married and asks Mr. and Mrs. Gardiner to keep it a secret from everyone. Elizabeth learns this fact and when Lydia returns home and accidentally tells her, her love for Mr. Darcy becomes even stronger. Now, In the end, Lady Catherine de Barrow is suspicious of Elizabeth's feelings for Darcy and orders Elizabeth to stay away from him. She refuses to do so, which makes Darcy confident that she too likes him. So meanwhile, Darcy convinces Bingley of Jane's true love and proposes to her. Then Darcy too proposes to Elizabeth. The story ends on a happy note as both the couples tie the knot. Now, uh, in case you are interested, you know, to watch the story, uh, the movie 
Pride and Prejudice, not by the name Pride and Prejudice, but Bride and Prejudice. It was released in 2004. It's a Bollywood film and the lead was played by none other than Ashwarya Rai. So if you have the time after exams or even during exams, you want to take a break, you can just watch it. Uh, although it's an adaptation, all things might not be similar to the novel. There might be some changes according to Indian culture. But yes, Mote uh, the story is uh, pretty much the same and you can get a fair idea of you know, just for entertainment purposes, not from the literature purposes, uh, like how the story goes. Now, some facts and quotes, friends. Uh, the novel's original title was First Impressions, but Austen's publisher convinced her to change it to Pride and Prejudice. The opening line of the novel is one of the most famous in English literature. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Other famous quotes are, I declare all there is no enjoyment like reading. How much sooner one tires of anything than of a book. When I have a house of my own, I shall be miserable if I have not an excellent library. A lady's imagination is very rapid. It jumps from admiration to love, from love to matrimony in a moment. In vain have I struggled. It will not do. My feelings will not be repressed. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. Angry people are not always wise. I could easily forgive his pride if he had not modified mine. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the story of love, twist, romance, shadi, everything. It's like it had to be made because it had all the Bollywood masala in it. So that's all for this uh, lecture. I hope you enjoyed the famous Austin novel called Pride and Prejudice. And we end the le lecture here and we'll soon meet in the next lecture. Until the time we meet next, happy learning and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.